This is Adam Gorney, Rivals with the Respect My Decision podcast, here with Donald Driver. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> it's a 14-year career, is that right? Correct. Yeah, correct, that, yeah. it still looks like you can get no, there and move around. No, no, them, day, them days over with, man. <laughs> yeah. I can still move a little bit because, you know, I'm always training my son and other NFL players and college athletes, so it kind of keeps me, keeps me young, I guess you can say. Let's talk about Driven Elite, what that is, the training part of it, all that kind of stuff, and how yeah. important it is and what you see out there. Yeah, Driven Elite is, uh, is, is a company I created about almost nine years ago. It was uh, just to get people acclimated to uh, the training that we have at the professional level. You know, so many times, you know, people create these fitness centers and, and sports performance complexes to uh, generate a lot of income. For us, it, it was never about that because me having a son and two daughters that play at the high level, I wanted to make sure that they would be able to get all the resources they need. You know, Driven Lee, we really focus on the most, and full, for us, it's the most important part is recovery, right? We say 85, 15, and people say, well, why do you say that, right? Because if I can keep you healthy, I can keep you playing the sport that you love. Yeah. So 85% goes to that, 15% goes to the training aspect of it and the, and the skill level. And if we do that, then we'll, we, can, we can make sure that you have a long career. Going through the recruiting process as a father, what's that like, and how much do you want to exert influence and your thoughts and all that stuff, but also kind of let him be a kid a little bit. You know? Yeah, I, I, you know, Christian, I have to say, I, it was uh, it was shocking. You know, after his freshman year, he had 27 Division One offers. Um, and who would have ever thought, right? You know, you normally don't get those offers until you're a junior. Like myself, I didn't get any offers until I was a sophomore or junior. Yeah. And then, unfortunately, you get you get the offers like these guys, these kids are getting today. It's exciting, but you want them to enjoy it because they're never going to get this opportunity back, right? And so, with that being said, he was able to sit back and, and, and at the end of his senior year, uh, this year he had 45 yeah. that he could pick from, and, and he chose the place he wanted to go. I mean, Daddy didn't have to weigh in on any options on that. I said, I want you to go somewhere you're going to be happy and you're going to enjoy it and, and get a great education because that's the number one goal for us is that they can always take that ball from you, as yeah. we all know, right? But the one thing they can't take is that piece of paper. And so he's excited that he's going to, um, you know, for the next three to four years, he'll be at uh, Penn State. I went to Penn State. Yeah, so, hey, yeah, exactly. Great, hey, great choice. Alum, not right alum. They work together. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> you had a different path, let's say humble beginnings. Yeah, exactly. Alcorn State. What is that like? How hungry do you have to be to get to where you got? Because that that's a lot of focus and a very thin line to get through there, you know? You, you know, I, I'll say this, is that I, I was a top-ranked uh, receiver coming out of high school. It, it was my grandfather that made me the decision to go to Alcorn State. Mm. Um, you know, Alcorn State, he wanted me to go to a black college. You know, I grew up in Houston, Texas. Texas Southern, Purview is right there. They never offered because they knew that that was not my plan to go to a black college. Um, but my grandfather wanted me to go there. So I honored him. I, you know, I always said I wanted to go to Miami, wanted to go to Texas A&M. And, and then I had those offers right after I committed to Alcorn State. Texas A&M and Miami offered me a full-ride scholarship to go there. But it all worked out, yeah. you know. And I think sometimes you, you, when you follow someone else's dreams, it allows you to see the future. And for me, that was it. You know, like I followed my grandfather's dream to allow that to happen. I'm so glad that I went to HBCU because it, it taught me humble beginnings, right? It's where I grew up from. And now you look at what HBCUs are going through now. Yeah. It's, it's that it's that same lifestyle, but it's all about opportunities. You know, and I think, you know, you think about, and I, and I say this because we've been with rivals now, Driven Lee's been with rivals for the last two years. And, and we see so many young men, this is all they want is an opportunity to right. grow, right? And right. so. If they get the opportunity, then they have to perform to make sure that they compete at that level. Because every kid out of this group uh, for the last, you know, I don't know how many years Rivals have been around, but you think about it, if they've been around 10 plus years, just imagine the opportunity for these young yeah. men. There's a lot of guys that came out of here that went to Division One college, they got drafted in the first round, that, that and has successful careers. And so Rivals doing a great job, and I'm just glad that, you know, we can be a part of it. And, then, you know, when you get the opportunity, you got to make Take the best it. of it. Yeah. That's interesting that you took that path um, because the number one player in the country last year did that same thing. Mm -hmm. Travis Hunter. Yeah. Jeez. Travis Hunter. And there might have been some criticism or this is showboating or this is whatever else, but he felt in his heart it was the right thing to do, play for Dion. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think he is going to ex – you know, there, there is definitely an argument of he's not going to play for a national championship. He's not going to play on, you know, ESPN every Saturday night in front of 100,000 people, but still, he has a path to the NFL, right? I mean, Correct. I mean, you know, that's the problem with people, right? They, they want to speculate and say, you have to go here to make it, and that's not always true. Right. Uh, this kid is going to have a great career. He has a great Hall of Fame quarter, uh, DB that's going to be able to teach him everything he needs to know at the professional level, not the college level, not the high school level. Right. And sometimes that's what you need. And, from, and, and I look at my career as that, is right? 
you take a different path and it all works out because I got the opportunity now. I didn't go first round. Yeah. You know, I went seven round, but how many Cinderella people can say, stories that can say, hey, I went seven round, I'm the all time packing lead receiver in franchise history, I won a Super Bowl, I won Dance with the Stars, and then I wrote a book that became New York Times bestseller. Right. Cinderella story, right? right, right. And I didn't have to go to Alabama. Right. I didn't have to go to Clemson, I didn't have to go to any of these big schools uh, to make that possible. So it's, it's all about opportunity. And when you get it, you got to make the best of it. And I think he's going to make the best of being at Jackson State. What does it take to play in the NFL for that long? You could kind of feel good about yourself after a year or two. But yeah. to maintain that, is it just pure physical skill or not really even all that much? I, I, I don't know. If, I think it's just that you have to have a hunger for it, right? Yeah. And then the game is, the game changes once you get there. You know, you actually have to get there and work. I mean, it's not going to be one of those things where when you're in high school, they give you everything, right? When you're in college, they give you everything. Uh, the pros, they don't do that, right? You got to earn everything you do. And, and that's the thing that I loved about it when I got there to Green Bay is that there was no guaranteed spots, right? If, if, you, if, you, if you did your job, you had an opportunity to make the team. And, and they was guys that got drafted before me that came to Green Bay. Yeah. They were top free agents that was in Green Bay. And I worked I worked them, you know, and I, and I did what I knew that I had to get better at, right? There was always there's a weakness. You have to be willing to admit that you have a weakness. And my weakness was I couldn't read defense because in the SWAC, we played man-to-man. -man. And so you get up there and they start playing zone coverage and all this, it's like spooked me. It's like, oh, the first time he bagged off me, I was like, okay, what do I do now? And so once I learned that, then it allowed me to stay. But then I made myself indispensable. Yeah. Meaning I didn't I didn't stick with one position because most time you get taught and say, hey, you're going to be the split in or you're going to be the flanker. Yeah, right. Well, I learned the split in, the flanker, the tight end's position because I knew at that point I was indispensable. Right. Because I can get in and play anywhere on the field. Right. What's Brett Favre like in the huddle and locker room? <laughs> What's Aaron Rodgers like in the huddle and locker room? Two different guys, yeah, right? Yeah, completely totally. two guys. You got the country boy, and then what I tell people, you got the Cali boy, right? <laughs> and so you get you get the country style boy that's just laid back, don't really do too much, and then you got you got you got the Cali boy that's a little bit more flashy, uh, very conservative but yeah. flashy, and I love it because I got to see both sides of him, right? I got to see the gunslinger that did everything, right? And if he trusted you, he was throwing the ball to you. I don't care if you had three guys on you, he trusts that his guy can make the play every single time. But then Aaron is a little bit different. You know, Aaron takes, kind of takes what the defense gives him. Brett just plays lights out every single time. And so, you know, people always ask that question, if you had to choose, who would you choose between Brett and Aaron? And I always say I'll take Bart Starr because Bart Starr was a little different <laughs> era back then. But for me, uh, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I think you can't choose one or the other, yeah. right? I think if the game is on the line, I'll take any one of them to, to go battle with me, you know. But, you know, I tell people all the time, my, my job was just to catch the ball. It doesn't matter who was throwing it to me. I talked to Drake Kirkpatrick, the Cincinnati Bengals no. DB, last week, and he said it was easy training in, in Cincinnati because there's not much to do there. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. Is, was Green Bay similar in the sense that, like, this is what is here. This is all I can do. I can't get caught up in the scene and all that kind of stuff. And was it two decades there? What's it like? <laughs> it, it is. It can't be too much there. You it's, know, it's, it's almost like a college town. Right. right? It's like right. there's nothing to do. There's no. There's no. There's no nightlife. You know. Yeah. There's nothing like that. So I tell people all the time: if you want to raise a family and be this, you know, good Christian man and live a good life, then Green Bay is where you want to go because <laughs> that's what you're going to end up. You're going to go to work and you're going to come home. You yeah. know. There's no. Uh, there's no nightlife. And so that allowed us to always study, study, study. But then, you, you know, for me, it was able to raise a family in a right. great environment, right? And so I had three kids. All three kids were born in Wisconsin. So they can't never say they're Texas babies. <laughs> right. They never say that. They're, they're all Wisconsin. So, it's, um, so yeah, there's a little bit of difference, but I think you, you, it allows you to grow who you are. The most important question, dancing with the stars. How hard was it? Did you know dancing at all? Or was this no, something? No, 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 no. no. This Come is on. all production, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, it's one of those things, right? I think it's it's... You learn, you learn how to hold your own, right? If I was out having a good time with the family, I can dance, right? Yeah. But ballroom dance is completely out of the box, right? I've never done ballroom dance before, and so I had that opportunity to go on the show that I knew I was out of my comfort zone. But what happens sometimes is that, for me, it was a great opportunity because no one has ever seen me without my helmet on. Yeah. And so now in the world, I had the opportunity to hear my story, unless you knew football, then right. you knew my story. But if you didn't, then the opportunity for uh, for the world to know my story was to be able to be on the show. And uh, and then to go on to win it, 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 was, it was amazing. So it kind of changed my life culture. I was able to do GMA after that. I yeah. did the Ellen Show. I did Oprah Winfrey. And so my life as a whole transitioned to something that's so much better now than uh, just the game of football. Nice. That is Donald Driver here with Adam Gorney for the Respect My Decision podcast. This is Adam Gorney with the Respect My Decision podcast. New <laughs> podcast. You like that name? Yeah, yeah that's cool. 
Woody came up with interviews, please, instead of no interviews, please. Yeah. You know, you get it? Uh, we're here with uh, five-star offensive lineman TJ Shanahan. I say five-star offensive lineman because you can play inside or outside, right? Center, does, does it matter? matter. Does does it matter? It, does it. And that mentality has carried well with you for years. I mean, where does that come from? How do you have it? Because you're not a guy that's going to shy away from stuff, you know? Uh, you know, I would just say just growing up, like, I don't know, just being parented by my parents. I've always, like, kind of been, like, a kid that doesn't shy away from stuff and just, like, kind of wants all the smoke. So that's kind of how I've always been. And, you know, I feel like I put that on full display here today, so... As you've gone through your recruitment, how much do you kind of look at that as you're looking at offensive line coaches, head coaches, programs, how they're run, all that kind of stuff in terms of how your mentality is going to fit into that, you know what I mean? Uh, I mean, I feel like it's going to fit in well. I mean, every coach that's, you know, offered me has, has told me that they love, like, just my aggressiveness and my physicality. But I feel like I, you know, I also am very technical with, like, yeah. my technique and my hand placement and all that stuff. So I feel like I have the full package. Is it ever hard to have that hunger, or is it just kind of nice to go out and know that you're going to exert your will on people all the time, you know? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I just like mixing it up with people. I yeah. like the, just the competitiveness. You know, let's, 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 let's one-on-one and let's see who's better. That's just kind of what I like to do. So Let's talk recruiting a little bit. What do you have coming up in terms of visits and, and all that kind of stuff? Uh, so I think next weekend I'm going to head up to Athens, uh, you know, visit the University of Georgia. And then um, the week after that, I'm going to go up to Texas Tech spring game. Um, and then the week after that, the last weekend of April, I'm going to I'm gonna head up to uh, Baton Rouge and visit LSU. Let's talk Georgia a little bit in terms of not only offensive linemen, but, but a whole program that kind of thrives on that intensity and getting after people and all that yeah. aggressive style. How much does that fit you? What has Georgia been saying? Kind of what do you think of them? Uh, I mean, you know, Georgia tells me all the time that, uh, you know, I'm like their number one offensive line guy. And I, I definitely feel that. I, mean, I, I get a lot of love from Georgia, you know, either if it's text from, you know, one of the recruiting assistants or a bunch of mail, um, you know, calls, all that stuff. So I, I definitely feel the love from Georgia, and I'm really excited to get up there. Texas Tech, talk about the connections that you have there and that staff that is just going to be relentlessly recruiting everybody, really. Yeah, uh, I mean, <laughs> I, I love Texas Tech. I mean, they're, they're a great school. My, my brother does go there. Um, you know, he's been doing good there. I think he's going to end up starting in the fall. So it'll be fun to watch him. I'll definitely be at a couple games. Um, but, I mean, Coach Hanby, Coach McGuire, Coach Kitley, I mean, all of them, I, I, I like all of them. And I feel like, you know, if I go there, I'll be in good hands, and if anyone goes there, they'll be in good hands. And, you know, the, that's like the type of coaching staff that kind of stays true to their word, and they don't switch their demeanor, you know, whenever you get there. So, LS, it's a great school. LSU with the new staff, with Brad Davis and, and everything else. What What is it that you want to see in Baton Rouge? Get a feel for Brian Kelly down there. What What is it for you personally that you want to see and do? Uh, I mean, just kind of feel the atmosphere. You know, I, I know it's definitely a new coaching staff, but, you know, Coach Davis is still there. He, you know, he's the guy I've been talking to since, um, Forever, June. Yeah, yeah. yeah, since since he's been there. So, um, I mean, I'm really fond of LSU. I feel like the atmosphere there is just like one of a kind, especially, you know, like in their stadium, Death Valley. I mean, it gets loud and feisty there, and I, I love that. So, um, I mean, just try to get a feel for everything and, and just try to see what's, what's, what's going on. And then after that, maybe a top 10, something like that, and then kind of figure it out? Oh, for sure. I mean, I think I'm going to release the top 10 here pretty soon. Yeah, perfect. That is five-star offensive lineman TJ Shanahan here with Adam Gorney for the Respect My Decision podcast.